Welcome back to another Spirit Island video. In this video, we're going to be continuing our series on Is This Spirit For You? In this video, we're going to be focusing on Breath of Darkness Down Your Spine. Now, Breath of Darkness is going to be the third Incarnate Spirit that we're going to be covering on this channel. The setup is you start with two presents on your starting board, one in the lowest number jungle and one in the highest number jungle. Your Incarna, unempowered, will be placed in the first jungle. I guess that means lower lowest jungle. I wish they would have stated that. Um, you also start with one explorer in the endless dark. Before I dive deeper, this is the only spirit in the game that I've never played a single game with. I've seen it played many of times, but I've never actually piloted the spirit. And the reason is I wanted to wait until I finally had the expansion in my hands so that I would have something to look forward to. So this is going to be kind of interesting doing this deep dive on, um, on the spirit. Or I guess it's not deep dive, but just actually going through exactly what it's what it's doing. Okay, so the play style, it's going to abduct lone invaders to gain fear and keep them off the board for a time. Its mobile incarnate is particularly useful for this. Reclaiming permits the invaders to escape from the void. This spirit has trouble with built up lands and may need to scatter invaders or take major powers to deal with them. And from what I've seen, this is 100% exactly what the spirit does um it's going to generate lots of fear it's going to be great at picking off lone invaders like lone cities but once the invaders establish themselves in lands the spirit really struggles this is a very well it's not very but it's a high complexity spirit that is very close to the very high threshold um i think high complexity is pretty on point with the spirit we talked about making it very high for uh, at one point but then we eventually um Brought it down over to just regular high. Summary of powers, it's, uh, I guess, below average offense. Very high control. Very high fear. Um, I, I, it has some defensive tools and a little bit more utility. It uses an Incarna, Beast, and Strife tokens. Looking at your power cards, let's look at the one that I know of the most. Reach from the Infinite Darkness. It's a zero-cost moon air animal. It's a fast power that targets yourself. You may abduct up to two presents total from their owner's permission from any lands on the island, ignoring land type restriction on moving presence. So what this means is, well, Breath of Darkness has this new keyword called abduct. And whenever you see abduct, that means that um, whatever's being abducted is going to be taken off the board and it's going to be placed in this endless dark. And we're going to be talking about this when we get to the special rules, but... um. This is a card that allows you to abduct, so you'd be able to steal presents and bring them into the Endless Dark. And spirits with presents in the Endless Dark grant them plus one range with all of their powers this turn. Oh, it says each spirit's presence. So if the spirit has been abducted multiple times, like if, um, if Darkness abducts, let's say, two of Behemoth's, presence that means behemoth will get plus two range on all of their powers on the turn that this card is played this card is a solid utility card looking at the next card we have terror of the hunted it's a one energy slow power it's a moon fire animal zero cost slow that targets a land with invaders if beasts are present one fear and add a strife then you get to add one strife per terror level if the target land is the Endless Dark, add an additional strife. Now, this first clause, it says, if beasts are present, well, our Incarna is a beast. So you have this incentive to use this card where your Incarna is, and then you obviously can get more strife based on the terror level, and then if you're using this, and if your target land is the Endless Dark, you could add even more strife. And this card, I don't know what strife is considered. It's probably a combination of utility and uh, defense. Emerge from the Dread Night Wind. It's a one energy slow, moon air. It's a slow power with range uh, infinite. You can add slash move the incarnate to target land. That means anywhere on the board. When you play this card, the incarnate jumps out of the endless dark and can go anywhere. One fear, if exactly one invader is present, abduct it. Otherwise, push up to two explorer's towns to different lands. Then you get to push two to Han. This is the one way that Darkness is able to bring back their Incarna onto the board, and it's going to be with this power card. 
And finally, we have Swallowed by the Endless Dark. It's a one energy fast moon, air, water, zero range, targets a land with invaders, two fear, abduct an explorer. And then if you have the threshold, you could abduct any invader. And once again, abducting, that means you're grabbing that invader from the board and you're bringing it to the Endless Dark here. So just looking at these cards, you're generating quite a lot of fear. It looks like four fear total from your cards. I should probably change to a different color there. There we go. So four fear across um, across your four cards, which helps contribute to this. But really, this fear bar is going to be because of your right innate. Okay, let's look at the special rule. It says you have an incarna. Empower the incarna after uncovering the incarna space. So the way that darkness empowers is once you uncover this space up here on top track. If it's empowered, every turn you may abduct a free explorer town at the empowered incarna each fast phase. So it's an additional abduction if you do empower. To abduct a piece, you move it to the endless dark. When pieces escape, they escape via growth options. Move them to a non-ocean land with your presence incarna. Now this is a typo that will get fixed. Right now it says land, basically meaning as it's currently written, all of the pieces that escape have to go to a single land. Um, I believe, like I said, this is a typo. It should say lands. And that means that the invaders will be able to be spread out amongst your presence and they don't have to go to a single land. But once again, we don't have exact confirmation, but that's what I've heard um, being discussed. When your powers were, would directly damage or destroy the only invader in a land, instead abduct it. Now this is an instead, so you have to do it if that's the case. Um, it's kind of interesting because if you have a lone city here, and I'm using my Incarna, if my Incarna deals one damage in that land, well, the city comes off the board into my Endless Dark. And as you can imagine, that is incredibly powerful because you're able to pick off lone, lone invaders to help create that pocket to prevent um, further um, explorers on your board. Shadow Touched Realm, your land targeting powers can target the Endless Dark as if it were a land ignoring range. So it's saying that the Endless Dark is an inland land and has no terrain. I'll remove this and I'll allow you guys just kind of to read the Endless Dark space here. There's a lot of particular rules, and I'm not going to get into the specifics of it. Um, the only thing that I'll mention here, it says fear cards and token events affect pieces here as if this were an inland land, but can't remove invaders. When they would inst instead generate one fear per invader, they would have removed. So if you ever get like um, like a fear card, I'm trying to find a good example, where like it just where it removes, like this card here, where it would remove an explorer town. I could always choose the Endless Dark to generate extra fear. And there's a bunch of other, other rules here that I'll let you guys read. Um, once again, I've never played the Spirit. I don't want to get into the, the nitty-gritty about um, all of the complicated rules questions that people are going to have about the Spirit. Looking at the growth options, you are a 0, 1, 1. This means that you're, going to not, you're not going to be placing presence on your Reclaim, and then you have two growth options that place a single presence. This means you're going to be growing the least among um, all types of spirits in the game. Looking at the gro growth options, the first growth option is a reclaim, gain a power card, move the incarnate to any land. Oh, so I believe... I wonder if this allows you to bring back... No, it says move. So if your incarnate is destroyed... Yes, yeah, so if your incarnate is destroyed, this does not let you um, add it to the board. But this does give you an infinite... Um, Incarna move if your Incarna is on the board. And then it says all pieces escape. That means all invaders, well, not, not invaders, everything that's in the Endless Dark that includes presence. Where is it? Presence that includes invaders. If you have tokens, they all escape. And you can divide those escaped pieces across all of your lands. And that'd be lands with your presence. Your G2 is going to give you a power card place a presence, and then two pieces escape, and then your G3, it's a presence placement, add or move the Incarna to a land with your presence. Ah, so I guess you can add your Incarna via this growth option too, so you have two ways to add your Incarna. Um, so, so add or move your Incarna to a land with your presence, one piece escapes, and then you gain energy equal to the number of card plays you have, so you'll either gain two, three, 
or four. So these are your three growth options. As you can see, very interesting on how you want to play the spirit. The longer you delay your reclaiming, the less, the more pieces you're going to be able to build up in your endless dark, and then um, you'll be able to milk them for fear via this right innate. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Looking at the tracks here, you end at five four, but once again you're a zero one one, so you're never really going to completely max out your tracks. Um, from what I've heard, there's some major power builds. Like something like this, where you go straight top track. I know there's um, some mixed track builds where you kind of go to like 3 3. There's some empower builds. There's some like two energy going down this way. So there, there's tons of ways to play the spirit depending on how you would like to approach it. Um, you do have this empower space here. You have nice two air. You have that nice animal, two moon, a move presence, and a reclaim one. So quite a lot. You have five elements on the tracks, lots to, lots to do while you're um, growing. Looking at your left innate, the left innate targets yourself. This allows you to do one damage at the Incarna, and then you may push it. So ideally you do a damage at the Incarna, push the Incarna, and then you can continuously do that over and over again. When you have a max threshold, you get to move the Incarna to the Endless Dark, and then it steals an invader. It brings it to the Endless Dark. So like I said earlier, the special rule says whenever you deal damage, and if it directly destroys the only invader in the land, you abduct it. So you're going to be using this left innate to, let's say, damage this invader. It gets abducted. Then you get to push the, the Incarna. Oh, look. Now maybe I can do that again because I hit the second threshold. Damage the invader. Abduct it. And then now, I'm, now I've done maybe just this first two tiers of the innate. So as you can see, that's incredibly powerful. Obviously, I picked up Explorers, but maybe I would have um, instead of grabbed the city instead. And then let's look at the right innate here. It says lost in the endless dark. It is a slow power range infinite targeting the endless dark. This is where we're going to generate a lot of fear. So we're going to generate one fear per invader, max four. So this can generate four fear. You then get to downgrade an invader. If you have the second threshold, you get another one fear per invader. So that's another four fears. So that's eight fear if you get the second threshold here. And then you may downgrade any number of invaders. So that allows you to get rid of those cities that are in that endless dark. And then this is something that we've asked them to do. And this is uh, creating a beast in the endless dark. And this is just more of a theme thing. You're creating these shadow beasts so that, um, well, one, it gives you stuff to escape. Because now when you have your G2 or G3, instead of escaping invaders... You can have beasts to escape, or um, and then also these beasts maybe can support the team if you're playing with like a Fangs or a Many Minds, um, stuff like that. Last thing, just to um, I guess revisit, is the Incarna counts as a presence and a beast. When it's empowered, it counts as the same thing, and the way we empower is by uncovering the spot on top track here. So overall, Breath of Darkness. What type of spirit is it? It's definitely not a defensive spirit. So if you love defensive strategies, this thing has no defense. It's incredibly proactive. And if you ever fall behind on your board, you're going to have a lot of trouble. And when I say fall behind, if invaders really start to build up, you're going to have problems. This spirit is best at fast clearing by abducting a lot of invaders, putting them in the endless dark, and then letting them sit there and then milk fear. Um, the amount of fear this thing generates is pretty high. I would say it's probably number two or number three in the entire game. Uh, Many Minds being number one. And then there's arguments for, um, where is it? Uh, I know Eyes, oh, Eyes, is, Eyes is not up here, but Eyes generates a lot of fear. Um, Bringer does too, but this spirit is right up with them. Control, once again, a lot of control abilities. You have this push effect, and you're also abducting invaders. So you're kind of... Um, I guess, moving invaders around and bringing them onto the board here. One of the things that Breath of Darkness does really well is it does support the team with Reach from the Infinite Darkness. It's not the best support card, um, but it does give people plus one range, and you'll be surprised how often that plus one range really does matter for spirits. Oh, also, creating beasts is another way where you can kind of support the team by creating a ton of beasts, and then um, those beast users can steal those beasts from you and then um, can utilize them. I'm looking forward to really playing some games with the Spirit. It looks like it's a lot of fun, 
And uh, this is probably going to be my the second fear spirit that I really enjoy. I mean, I really enjoy many minds, um, just because I love that uh, that control defensive strategy. And this is more of a just control aggro strategy. And um, it's something that I'm not really used to. So if you like this video, like, subscribe for more content. I will see you guys in the next video.